Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, the session tonight is mainly on an introduction to defensive and competitive bidding, which is mostly what forms the last portion of this course. Um, as I've said before, defensive and competitive bidding isn't really part of any given bidding system as such. Certainly, OCP doesn't make any stipulations that way, but uh, this is what I suggest to, to my students, what I'm going to cover today. Um, if it doesn't suit your methods, then that's absolutely fine, um, but pretty much what I'm going to suggest is sort of mainstream bidding uh, that you'll find most people adhere to. Maybe with a few tweaks along the way. So most bidding systems are primarily concerned with constructive bidding when you've opened the bidding. If your opponents have opened the bidding and you're, if you like, bidding competitively after they've opened, that's generally outside the scope of most bidding systems as such. A lot of bidding systems make suggestions about how you can approach defensive bidding, um, but broadly they all follow similar lines. Um, an overcall is an overcall in ACOL, 2 over 1, Standard American, Precision, OCP, you name it. Um, and, and all of those systems don't really make any cast iron definitions about defensive bidding. So we will spend a little bit of time on overcalls today. Um, uh, but not much. Primarily, today is going to be having a look at uh, um, at two suited overcalls, i.e. Michael's Unusual No Trump and Modified Guestum for those of you who uh, haven't come across that. And uh, hopefully you'll find that of some value, particularly if you don't use Guestem at the moment. Um, so next week's session starts to get a little bit more uh, off the wall, if you like, um, where we'll start introducing uh, Levensol in competitive sequences. Um, uh, that's quite a hard week compared to this week, which you'll find pretty easy. Um, but the amount of effort that you put in and the time and uh, headache that next week might cause you is well worth the effort, let me promise you. Uh, that's probably, um, the next few weeks are probably um, some of the most crucial ones of the whole of my year-long course. So, overcalls to start with. Okay, so overcalls cover a very wide range normally of uh, strength. Um, you may not have uh, enough distribution for a weak jump overcall. Um, but actually want to make a lead directing bid just because you have one decent suit. Um, and so you may want to make a lead directing overcall with as little as seven or eight points. Uh, and it could be right up to 17 points. It covers a very wide range. Generally speaking, wider range than uh, opening bids do. And consequently, you need to have some methods in place to allow... Um, responder or advancer as they tend to be called when their partner is overcalled to make a move and for 
the overcaller to have some means of showing partner which end of the, the, the overcall spectrum they are. Just bear with me a minute. Just one second, my uh, headphones are about to give up the, the ghost, I think. Okay, that's better. Um, right, so... Obviously, different people's style differs. Um, uh, their styles differ enormously in terms of their approach to competitive bidding. Um, some people do just overcall at the drop of a hat on any old rubbish. Uh, my personal mileage is that actually that's very often counterproductive. Um, you know, if you start calling on rubbish, then, you know, I mean, I've shown an example there is sort of jack 8653 if you overcall that but ops end up buying the contract and partners on lead do you really want them to lead that suit rather than something else um, it's not necessarily going to help you at all and might well damage you for partners to lead that suit um, similarly if you haven't got the distribution or the strength uh, to actually compete it's probably not worth um, tipping off ops to maybe which of you and your partner uh, has the majority of the points or where the distribution lies. You can end up giving a lot of information away by competing when you don't really have a decent hand. And I'm not talking about strength necessarily, when you don't have a decent hand um, to intervene. If you think of it this way, if you read bridge books and you read example hands where there's competitive bidding um, or where you're dealing with declare a play and, and the bidding is given, how often the line that your declare a play should take is actually determined by the opposition bidding where they've intervened and how you actually need to take inferences from what they bid. Now, I mean, that works two ways. If they stay silent, um, you've potentially got a much harder job as declarer to actually figure out how to play the hand. And quite often it could end up costing declarer a trick if you stay silent and they've got to figure it all out for themselves rather than you giving them tips on actually how to play the hand if they're astute enough to to take the inferences that you're giving them so it works both ways i'm not suggesting remotely that you should stay silent and never intervene of course not um, but do it do it on the right hands where you can actually make a difference not just to make a token effort of saying hi i'm here at the table as well and uh just because you've got something like an opening strength hand. Overcalling just because of that is uh, a losing gambit, I feel. So, overcall by means when you've got a decent suit that you want partner to lead. In other words, it's just a lead directing overcall. Or if you've got enough distribution and or points that you you think you have a serious shot at competing for the contract. Don't forget that 
over calls suggest one kind of hand, whereas takeout doubles suggest another. And very often you should be considering a takeout double rather than actually over calling something if your suit isn't very strong or if it's a sort of three suited hand. Okay, any questions so far before we, uh, we move on to considering what advancer should be doing when partner has overcalled? Don't be shy. If you've got something to say, just type it. Okay. Okay, so firstly, direct suit raises. Uh, again, this is my style. Um, if you prefer to play them sort of more limit-based, then that's absolutely fine. As long as you and your partner are on the same wavelength, that's really all that matters. Personally, I play right the way through OCP and almost every part of competitive bidding. We pay direct suit raises as largely preemptive. Uh, they're not limit bids, they're not uh, normally invitational. Um, they're simply trying to use up ops bidding space um, or making it more difficult for ops to intervene. So if it goes one club, one heart over call, pass three hearts that's not invitational to game that's simply saying I've got hearts I've got some distribution I probably don't have much in the way of points but I just want to make life more difficult for ops it doesn't mean that the overcaller can't bid on but it's not an invitation as such Okay, now, here is where my style significantly may start to diverge from what you currently do. Supposing partner, supposing ops overcall, oh sorry, open one club or one diamond. Partner bids one of a major and you make a change of suit response. Not a cubit of their suit, but just a different suit. Do you treat that as forcing or not? Now, all I'm suggesting really at this stage is that it's a discussion that you need to have if you have a regular partner. Um, and a lot of it is, is going to come down to whether you play unassuming cubits or not. A UCB um, is just shorthand for an unassuming cubit. Uh, so uh, my personal preference is that if you want to set up a forcing sequence when partner has made an overcall then pretty much you have to go through a, an unassuming cubit which is a, a cubit an immediate cubit of their suit uh, any sequence that doesn't go through a, an, an unassuming cubit is then by definition not forcing which broadens your scope for simply making non-forcing but suggestive responses when partners made an overcall. Okay, so we're going to have a look at unassuming cubids a bit more in a minute. Okay, so jump over calls. 
modern style tends to be to play these as weak. Uh, if you still play them as strong, then more power to your elbow. Um, it's a matter of style. As, again, as long as you and your partner are on the same wavelength, um, it doesn't really matter. You can play unassuming cubids over jump over calls, just the same as you can over simple over calls. Um, OCP uses something called competitive Levensol, which is Levensol in any competitive sequence that's at the two level where two no trumps isn't required for something specific. Other than Levensol, obviously. Um, that competitive Levensol has an entire lesson and a half to itself. And it can take you possibly up to 12 months to really fully get into competitive Lev and Soul. It's quite a complex subject. But as I said before, it's well worth any effort you make to learn it and get it under your belt because it really does make a huge difference to your competitive bidding. Okay, so unassuming cubids and competitive Lev and Soul are particularly competitive lemon soul is the thing that really sets my approach to competitive bidding apart from the mainstream uh, not everybody uses unassuming cubids you may not have the faintest idea what they are but actually you will know immediately when we get into it what they are you just call them something else um, and that's absolutely fine uh, and I think probably most people will play them to some extent uh, even if they don't follow all of the um, the refinements and the implications of having a cubit of their suit as the only forcing sequence. Okay, any questions so far on direct suit raises, change of suit responses, um, before we start looking at unassuming cubits in a bit more depth? Please, if you've got something to say, uh, just type it out. Um, I'm more than happy to answer questions no matter how th there's no such thing as a silly question to be honest uh, if it's occurred to you it's probably occurred to other people so uh, and no answer no question is stupid although some of the answers might be Roger, maybe you could just uh, do me a favour and just send the URL for radio12345, um, ocp.radio12345.com, just in case anybody's come late and hasn't uh, occurred. Not any good to you, uh, Sanya? Oh, very impressive, Roger. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. Um, righty ho. Let's have a look at unassuming cubids. Okay, some people actually call these Western cubids. Um, UAC, not sure you mean, but I'm assuming you're meaning unassuming cubids. Ellie, unassuming cubids are always forcing for at least one round. And maybe only for that. But it can be that they're forcing for game. The main thing is that they are forcing. And it's what advancer ends up bidding after, on the next round of bidding after their unassuming cubid, that really determines which okay um, again if you bear with me I do cover that in the course of uh, this next little session so some people think of or I have heard people call unassuming cubits Western cubits actually Western cubits are subtly different um, and certainly in sort of OCP speak 
a Western Cupid is really what we would think of, or what I would think of, um, as uh, a directional asking bid, which normally comes a bit later in the bidding sequence than an unassuming Cupid does. Okay. Unassuming Cupids are called unassuming Cupids because the overcaller cannot make any assumptions or assume anything about advancers holding in the cubid suit. Um, and actually, an unassuming cubid can be a reasonably wide variety of different hands. And again, advancer will make it clear what kind of hand they have in their next bid after the unassuming cubit. Um, but again, more of that in just a minute. Uh, I will come up with some examples uh, in a bit. Um, I don't want to use too many of the example hands because I've only got eight handy and uh, we're probably going to have a little bit of time for some practice hands later on. And I'd rather use them for that because it tends to be a bit more valuable. Okay, so the main use for unassuming cubids is one of the first two. Um, really, I include number three in number two for the most part, but I've split them there simply to differentiate between hands that are maybe interested in no trumps and hands that actually want to go to game but not necessarily in partner's suit. Okay, so uh, unassuming cubits can generally be either uh, strong supporting hands with at least a good raise to the three level, as opposed to a preemptive raise to the three level, a decent serious invitation to game in partner's suit, in other words, where you've got support for the overcaller's suit, or any strong hand that wants to set up a forcing sequence um, but that doesn't have to be a hand that's necessarily interested in the overcaller suit so that probably covers 90% uh, at least of hands that would otherwise would, would use a, an unassuming qubit So the unassuming cubid doesn't actually promise anything specifically. It's simply forcing for one round. And it's a little bit like Levensol in some ways. In that a sequence that doesn't include an unassuming cubid is by definition not forcing. It might be constructive, but it's not forcing. But if you want to set up a forcing sequence, you make the unassuming qubit first, and then you start on your constructive sequence in the knowledge that it is then forcing. If you've got type 1, then you tend to make the unassuming qubit, and then you support partner's major, or whichever, sorry, partner's suit, at whatever level you think is appropriate. Okay, any questions so far? Before we start looking at uh, the overcaller's rebid. Okay.
So obviously, if the unassuming qubit is forcing, then the overcaller has to bid something um, in the, on the assumption that uh, the person to the overcaller's right doesn't bid something. If they do bid something, then obviously the overcaller actually doesn't have to bid anything and their silence may speak volumes. So don't feel that just because partner's bid was forcing, if your right-hand opponent bids something, that doesn't mean you have to bid at all. Um, obviously, if you've got something further to say, then say it. But if you've just got a basic, fairly minimum overcall of your suit and you've got no other suit to show or no particular extra length to show, then feel free just to pass if your right-hand opponent bids something and partner can take an inference from that. Okay. So if partner makes an unassuming Q bid over your overcall, um, if you've simply got that basic minimum overcall um, and your right-hand opponent doesn't bid anything, then you just return to your original suit at the minimum level and, and the inference of that is obvious. That you're, if, if all partners got is um, type one, in other words, a, a decent three-level invitation in your suit, then actually you're not interested in game. You don't have anything to spare for your overcall and you wouldn't accept a decent invitation to game in your suit. That doesn't stop uh, the unassuming Q bidder from bidding on, but at least they know where you stand on that. So if you wouldn't accept an invitation to game, then you just, and you haven't got anything else to show, then you just return to your original suit. If partner's got type two, in other words, a hand that wants to set up a forcing sequence, then they can obviously bid on over that. Okay. So if you've got, you're entitled to assume as the overcaller that most of the time your partner is going to have um, type one. In other words, the hand with a, at least three level support for your suit. There will be occasions when they don't. Um, but if you've got a strong single suited hand uh, with decent strength, it's okay to jump to game. Um, to show a decent opening strength hand that would accept an invitation and a, a single suited long suit. If you've got something more constructive that you can show, then by all means do that instead. So number three there, if you've got a second suit that you can show, whether you've got um, option two or not, um, if you've got a little bit to spare for your strength and you've got a second suit, then by all means show it. If you haven't got any of one, two or three, but you do have a stop in op suit, then you can bid no trumps at the minimum level as well. If you're playing Lebensol, that does affect whether you can bid number four. So more of that in a few weeks' time. Right. The two club bid is uh, an unassuming Q bid. Okay. Uh, the three clubs is whatever you want it to be, Sanya. Okay. Uh, uh, you could play, I, I mean, some people would play three clubs, a jump qubit of their suit, as showing avoiding clubs and uh, support for hearts. 
in other words, it's like a splinter, but specifically showing a void. Um, so OCP now uses exclusion beta. Uh, we could eventually start doing that, although it's not in the system at the moment. Um, and the uses of exclusion beta are so limited that I don't think we will. Um, but uh, in the main, I would have little use at the moment for three clubs. If you want to assign it a meaning, then do. But it's more likely to be weak than strong. Um, because if you're wanting to set up a forcing sequence, you want to keep the bidding space for yourself. Okay, if you've got at least a three serious three-level invitation, why use up all of that bidding space to make a jump cubid in their suit when potentially you can use that to find out about whether partners got a decent overcall or whether they're just making a noise um, and potentially stop in two hearts rather than three hearts for extra safety. Uh, I don't see I don't see any advantage in having those two bids competing at all. So OCP wouldn't have a use for three clubs in those sequences at the moment. Um, two clubs would be the unassuming Q bid. Three clubs would be completely undefined. It might even show clubs. Um, okay. Anybody else got any questions before we go any further? Okay, bearing in mind, Sanya, that, that uh, some people may play it as Bergen, but bearing in mind the huge level uh, or the huge range for overcalls, um, personally, I wouldn't. Certainly, OCP doesn't. Um, Bergen raises don't form any part of OCP because um, we have, to be honest with you, better methods when we've opened the bidding. Um, when we've overcalled, we have different sorts of methods. In other words, competitive Levensol and unassuming Qubits that allow you to do the same thing, but a little bit more cheaply rather than having to start leaping about the place. Okay. Okay, so we've had the unassuming Qubit, an overcaller is rebid. If Advancer merely supports overcaller's original suit at the minimum possible level, then clearly they've got type one of those. They, they had a decent invitation to game in... Uh, Opener's suit, or oh, sorry, overcaller's suit. And it's then entirely, you know, if, if the overcaller has either passed, if, if ops bid again, or uh, if they simply rebid another suit at the minimum level or repeated their original suit at the minimum level, and Advancer merely supports the overcaller's suit at whatever level is. Uh, possible, um, then clearly they, all they started out with was a decent three-level raise in the overcaller's suit. If they bid game, then clearly uh, they're either forced into that or they had enough strength that they were always going to go to game, but they simply wanted to make the unassuming cupid first in case the overcaller actually had a really decent hand and they might possibly have a slam on. However, if Advancer starts to bid a new suit over the overcaller's rebid, then that tends to suggest type 2, 
in other words, the hand that wanted to set up a forcing sequence. There is not really um, any middle ground there. If all you have is a three-level raise in overcrawl the suit, you're going to tend to support their suit at the minimum possible level. Um, well, he must have a long suit if he's overcalled. He must have at least a five-card suit, okay? He's not promising any extra length. If it, Supposing it goes, Ellie, supposing it goes one club by uh, opener. Partner overcalls one spade. Okay, you bid two clubs, an unassuming Q bid. Partner bids two spades. Are they promising any extra length in spades? No, they're not. Okay, all they're showing is five card spades, fairly minimum overcall, wouldn't accept an invitation to game in spades, and so now the ball comes back to the unassuming Q bidder. They can pass two spades. If they had a good hand, then, then they might bid three spades or four spades. Because partners either got support for spades, and that's probably 90% of the time. 10% of the time, they've got a hand that wanted to set up a, a forcing sequence. So, uh, you know, they're probably going to bid on over four spades. But that's an answer or, or a, an argument in favor of not jumping to four spades rather than bidding two spades. Exactly, in which case all you would do is just repeat spades. Okay, if you've got a second suit, then bid it. Because that's more constructive. That's telling partner more about your hands. So if you've got another four card suit, especially if you've got a decent hand, then do it. But bear in mind, supposing, um, again, let's go back to that sequence. You've got a, uh, a one club opening bid, partner over calls one spade, you bid two clubs, an unassuming Q bid, and partner now bids two diamonds. Have a think about it. What does that say about partner's hand? Sorry, partner's hearts. Anybody? A partner overcalls one spade. And over your unassuming cubit of two clubs, they come up with two diamonds. Absolutely right, Susie. Well done. If partner's got spades and diamonds, if they had hearts as well, supposing they had five spades, four diamonds, three hearts, and a singleton club, they'd be much more likely to make an over uh, a takeout double over one club. They might be one spade. But it's more likely that they don't have uh, two, three, four, five in hearts. Unlikely, Sanya. Honestly, if if I if I had five four four zero and ops open my void, I'm I'm doubling. Definitely doubling for takeout. Because that's the absolute perfect hand, pretty much. Near enough for a double. I wouldn't overcall just because I've got five spades. Okay, if, if you've got a perfect shape for a takeout double, then it's... I would still double, potentially. Or I would pass. And wait, if I've only got eight, eight points... I might possibly pass. You know, I, I mean, the thing is, if you've got an eight-point hand without a really long suit, unless it's a really strong suit, 
you know, give me Ace King Jack 10 X. Now I might make a simple overcall as a lead director. Yes. And if partner uh, comes up with an unassuming Qubit, um, then probably I'm just going to bid two spades, to be honest, even with 5440. Okay, because if I bid, if I've only got eight points, if I bid a new suit, it tends to suggest that I've got a little bit to spare, that I haven't got just my bare minimum overcall. Okay, and I don't want partners to start getting excited just because I've bid a new suit. If they've got type two, in other words, they've got a hand that wants to set up a forcing sequence. Now I can come to life if they start bidding. Uh, if I bid two spades and they start bidding three hearts or three diamonds. Now I can uh, come to life and support it. But I don't want to give partner the wrong advice the wrong advice if i've if all i've got is is that eight point hand with five four four zero and all they've got is a hand that's that's worth an invitation in spades because i'm not really necessarily interested in game necessarily i might be with a void in sp in clubs but uh um i want partner to show what they've got first Give them the maximum amount of room by giving them the maximum amount of space. <coughs> okay, any other questions before we move on? Okay. Okay, so just, um, that's really making the point that I said before that uh, and it does apply more in uh, when partners initially overcalled a minor. There's a very definite implication that they don't have three card support for the the unbid suit. Supposing it goes one spade, two clubs overcall, two spades unassuming cubid, and now uh, three diamonds, for example. There's no way that. Uh, the overcall has got three card hearts here. Otherwise, they would surely have doubled initially rather than bidding two clubs. Okay. So, any questions on unassuming cubits? Um, again, you can come up with your own style for these. Um, you don't necessarily have to follow what I'm suggesting. Um, If you Google unassuming cubids, I think you'll probably find there's quite a lot on the web about them. Again, you may find them, see them called something else. Um, but I think there are some articles on unassuming cubids. Um, and most systems tend to have something like that, even if they call them something else. Okay, moving on. So next, we're going to start looking at two suited overcalls. So we've covered simple overcalls and jump overcalls just enough um, because an overcall is an overcall in almost any system. And uh, there's not really anything significantly different unless you don't already play unassuming cubits. If you don't, I would suggest that you do. Okay, so two suited overcalls. Is the main thing. So we're going to have a look at Michael's first. Okay. There are. Well, I'll I'll type this first, and then um, Michael's cubids. If you're not playing normal, unmodified guest M are always weighted towards the majors. If you're playing normal, unmodified Gestem, then what we think of as a Michael's Cubid is actually showing the two extreme unbid suits. 
but uh, that's not what I'm going to suggest, so I'm not going to say any more about that. If you want to play unmodified Gestum, do. Most people tend to play modified Gestum, um, which leaves Michael's as it is, because most people understand that, uh, including your partner. They're less likely to get it wrong. Okay, so normally Michael's cubids are weighted towards the majors. Over a minor, it shows both majors. And over a major, it shows the other major and one of the minors. And there is where there are two significant schools of thought. Okay, so there's two ways of playing Michael's. Um, essentially, you can either... Um, play that it only promises the other major and one of the minors and it could be either minor um, that's what I think of as the sort of vague Michaels um, or you can play that Michaels is always showing the two highest unbid suits in other words if ops have opened one of a major then your Michael's Cupid is always showing the other major and diamonds. And if ops have always have opened one of a minor, it's always showing both majors. In other words, you're always showing two specific suits, and that's the key for me. I would rather play two suited overcalls uh, in this instance as showing two specific suits. So I would always play number two of those two options. If you prefer to play number one, uh, that's fine. And what that suggests is that you are not playing Gestem or modified Gestem, rather. Um, but you're making life hard for your partner, I feel, personally. It's much easier for them to visualize uh, where to go on the hand if they know exactly which two suits you've got because uh, they've got a much better idea, really, of how well their hand is fitting with yours. OK, so you can play either of them. Uh, there are swings and roundabouts. Um, as I've said there, my preference is definitely um, uh, option two, which is uh, the two highest unbid suits, always. Um, okay, if you play method one, where it's the other major and an unspecified minor, then normally a two-no trump um, response is saying... I don't like the major, which minor have you got? Uh, if you use method two, which is my preferred one, then uh, you can use two no trumps as Levensol. Uh, but you need to be you need to be playing modified Gestum really if you're gonna play uh, your Michael's Cubid as being the two highest unbid suits. Really, that only works if you're going to play Gestem as well. Okay, so we'll come. We will come to Gestem uh, in a bit, but uh, sticking with Michael's. Now, this is actually the most crucial point, to be honest, because most of you probably use Michael's. Uh, Most people who've really thought about it play Michaels as either weak or strong, but never, ever, ever intermediate. It's very important that you get your head around this. Okay? If you, if you use Michaels on a hand that's sort of in the 11 to 15 range, you are opening yourself to a world of hurt. And if you've never thought about it or never come a cropper, uh, you're either 
um, ill-advised or very lucky because you should play your Michaels as either weak, in other words, sort of say five to nine, or as strong, 16 plus. You pick the levels, but there should be a definite gap in the middle that you cannot be. Okay? The main reason for that is that if partner is intermediate, if you are also intermediate, they don't know what to do. Or if they make a move, you don't know what to do. All right, so a little bit more about this. All right, so if you play the weak or strong but never intermediate method, which is, I mean, actually what I think you will find that most people do, certainly all experts do if they're going to use Michaels. They would never do it on an intermediate hand. Um, and the reason for it is this. If you make a Michaels Cupid, partner assumes that you are five to nine and fundamentally weak. If they've got uh, an intermediate hand, unless they've got an exceptionally good fit for your suit uh, and they want to make a preemptive bid, then uh, if they've just got, you know, an average hand with some support for one of your suits, they treat you as weak and they just support at the minimum level whichever suit they prefer. Okay. If you are now 16 plus, you can make an invitation, but at least one of you is 16 plus. So you're strong, even if partner's fairly weak, you're not getting too out of hand, but you know where you're going. Okay, if partner is weak and, and you make an invite having uh, used Michaels in the first place, at least they know that you're 16 plus rather than five to nine. Similarly, if partner is 16 plus, they can make an invite. You can decline it if you're five to nine, they can still bid on. But at least, again, you know where each other is going. The problem is, if you are 11 to 15, an intermediate, and you use Michaels, partner, if they've got a 13 count, for example, doesn't know what to do. They don't know whether you're in the 5 to 9 range or the 11 to 15 range or the 16 plus range. And they don't know whether to invite. And if they do invite, you don't know whether they're doing it with a 13 count or with a 16 count. So it's very, very important that you stick to that. Okay. Uh, where are we? So what do you do with intermediate hands? The answer is that you simply overcall them. You don't use Michaels, okay? And now, when you show your second suit, partner knows that you're in the sort of 11 to 15 sort of range, not five to nine or 16 plus. Or you might be in that kind of range, but you don't, you aren't at least five, five, okay? I would never use Michaels or Unusual No Trump or guess them with a 5-4 hand or a 6-4 hand. It's got to be at least 5-5. Five, five. Um, if you're showing a two-suiter, that's just, again, a fairly cardinal rule of mine. I don't tend to do them on 5-4 unless whatever bid I'm playing specifically admits that possibility. Uh, most people will play uh, Michaels and Unusual and uh, Guest M as uh, five five or better okay any questions so far on michaels again most of you probably use michaels uh it's very valuable um but for my money 
it's it's only really valuable if you've got the other two parts of of uh, two suited overcalls available. So we're going to come to them in a minute. But just before we do, okay. So you can use unassuming qubits over a Michaels, um, uh, and you can use Levensol, particularly if you're using the two highest unbid suits uh, as your Michaels qubit. Um, depends on space, obviously. Okay, any other questions on Michaels uh, before we move on to unusual no trump? So again, my suggestion would be to play to play Michaels as being the two highest unbid suits, at least 5-5, five, five, and either weak or strong, but never intermediate. That's it in a nutshell. You can put in whatever range of responses over the Michaels qubit as you like. I tend to use unassuming qubits or direct suit raises being preemptive in either of part of uh, the Michaels bidder's suit. Um, if you want to set up a forcing sequence, if you've got a strong hand, use an unassuming qubit in Opener's original suit. Um, so you might get a, um, a sequence like one club opening, two clubs, Michael's qubit showing both majors, and three clubs, now an unassuming qubit of clubs, saying, okay, I've got at least a decent three-level invitation in uh, one or other of your suits, and I'll clarify it on my next bid. Or I've got a strong enough hand, probably with support for one of your suits, uh, that I want to set up a forcing sequence. In other words, I'm really strong. Okay, any questions on Michaels? You're all very quiet tonight. I get the distinct impression you've all been taking tranquilizers um, before this session, which is... Oops, hang on. I've just... pulled myself out. Just bear with me a second. Okay, so on to unusual no trump, which is the minor weighted equivalent of Michael's. Okay, so unusual no trump does for the minors what Michael's does for the majors. Um, so if it goes one of a major, two no trumps, it's always showing both minors. And again, you depending on whether you've got guest dem available, uh, normally determines uh, well, I'm coming to that, Ellie. Okay. If you've got the two lower suits or if you've got both minors over a major, then you use unusual no trump. Okay. Um, but don't, just bear with me because I'm going to cover all three possibilities. In a minute, okay. So uh, just be patient, and we will get to that. Okay. So if you've, uh, you can either use unusual no trump to be uh, both minors over a major, and over a minor it's the other minor and an unspecified major. Again, that's not my preferred method. I personally always play unusual no trump as being the two, that's okay, Ellie, no problem. Um, I always play unusual no trump as being the two lowest unbid suits. I understand, Ellie. Uh, nothing I can do about it, unfortunately. You just have to bear with me. Okay, so, um, again, whichever you prefer is fine. As long as you've 
um, assessed and, and worked out the progression of the sequence beyond that if you're particularly if you're playing uh, one of a minor two no trumps as being the other minor and one of the majors okay um, obviously uh, if you're playing unusual no trump Levensol is not available but you can have unassuming qubits Levensol is not available because the two no trump bidder has bid two no trumps or maybe even gone beyond that um, but as with Michaels again play unusual no trump as weak or strong but never intermediate okay just just content yourselves with an overcall if you've got an intermediate hand that gives you more space to explore with your partner um, and, and it's easier for you and especially for partner to judge how strong you are um, in the subsequent bidding because they know that you're probably 11 to 15 rather than 5 to 9 or 16 plus Okay, uh, again, uh, I've said this before, I'll say it again, much better if partner knows exactly which two suits you've got. It's much easier for them to immediately assess correctly uh, how the two hands are fitting and um, consequently how far they might like to push things on the assumption that you're weak. Again, if you want to go the other route, then be my guest. Um, uh, I have tried both methods in the past, um, but it's a long time since I willingly played uh, any system of competitive bidding that didn't include guest M. And guest M is the thing that that is the final piece of the jigsaw. Okay, and it's it's guest M and particularly if you're playing modified guest M that allows you to play Michaels as the higher two on bid and unusual no trump as the lower two on bid so here comes guest M so basically what Ellie was asking before was what you do when you have the extreme unbid suits in other words not the two highest not the two lowest but the lowest and the highest unbid suits and the answer is modified guest M now um, uh, a little bit about guest M uh, the original version of guest M which actually very few people play um, is this so if you're playing normal guest M, then the three club overcall over any opening bid at the one level is effectively Michael's showing the two highest unbid suits. Okay, normal guest M, the original version, uh, um, would play Michael's as being the extreme unbid suits. An unusual no trump is still always the lowest two on bid suits. Now, there are, to be fair to guest M, uh, which wasn't done without thought, there are some advantages to that scheme. On the other hand, uh, there are also disadvantages to it, not least the fact that Michael's 
is such a universally known and used method that it's very easy for partner to forget that you're actually showing the extreme on bid suits rather than uh, the highest two when you use Michaels. Okay. Um, so I prefer to leave Michaels as Michaels, leave unusual no Trump as unusual no Trump, and play modified guest M, in which case the three club overcall, i.e. a jump overcall in clubs, is showing the two extreme unbid suits. It doesn't make a massive amount of difference as long as you and partner are on the same wavelength. But uh, if you're going to agree to play modified guest M uh, or guest M, most people will understand that as being the modified guest M, in which case Michaels is left alone and it's the three club overcall that promises the two extreme unbid suits. Most people will assume that, so it's probably better to play that as standard. Um, but if you want to Google guest M, I, I think the, uh, I can't remember which one, but certainly one of them does explain the subtle advantage in playing the original version of guest M, but it is a fairly subtle one. Uh, there's one uh, amusing anecdote, um, and routinely you will see people who say they're playing guest M um, will uh, suddenly come up uh, having used guest M, and it turns out they've got a weak jump overhaul in clubs. The most famous example of that was actually by uh, Mr. Guest M themselves, where he did it in a fairly high level competition and forgot his own convention and uh, made a jump over calling clubs with a long club suit rather than um, uh, the two highest unbid. Um, but anyway, okay, so that's a, a brief uh, thing about guest M. So, So when I say guest M from here on, I mean modified guest M, okay? Because I really would suggest that you play that rather than the original version, okay? So if you're playing modified guest M, if ops opened a major, then three clubs is always, is always showing the other major and clubs. If ops opened a minor, then it's always showing the other minor and spades. So if you're playing modified guest M or guest M for that matter, you always have a means of showing two specific suits, no matter which 5-5-2 five, five, suitor you have. But again, just the same as with Michaels and Unusual, uh, use it as weak or strong, but never intermediate. Okay, it applies just as much if you're playing guest M as if you're playing if, as if you're not. Okay, any questions on Michael's unusual no Trump or modified guest M or anybody got any other uses for um, for those bids that I've not explained? apart from obviously just weak jump over calls. Anybody play anything significantly different to what I've covered today? You're all asleep. Well, that's how it feels anyway. Right. Okay. Um, I think that'll do. That's uh, three quarters of an hour. Okay. Has anybody got any anybody got any comments or observations or different approaches to anything that I've covered today? Okay, if you're using guest M, modified guest M three clubs as being the two extreme unbid suits, then yes, you don't have you don't have Levensol available. 
you do have unassuming cubids available, but you don't have Labensol, it's true. But then you don't have Labensol over unusual no trump either, because the two no trump bit is spoken for. Most of the time, bear in mind, most of the time, um, you're going to be 5 to 9 rather than 16 plus. Okay? If you've got a rock crushing, you know, 18, 19 count, uh, you're, more in like, you're more likely to start off with a double and then bid something to show that rock crushing hand than you are to use what's primarily a sort of preemptive two suited overcall. Okay, and you're much more likely to be five to nine than you are to be 16 plus. Uh, it's simple um, probability. So I'm not quite sure what you were getting at there, Sanya. Um, very, you know, if you, if you accept that most of the time you're going to be five to nine, the three club bid is essentially a preempt rather than a constructive bid. Okay. All righty. Um, can I please have four volunteers to sit and play a few hands? No guarantees on exactly what these are about, but... It remains to be seen how you guys, it doesn't matter, by the way, what system you're playing on these hands. You could be playing forcing pass, mosquito, whatever. Okay, so don't worry if you're not playing OCP. Um, in fact, probably better if you don't. Just imagine you're playing standard American, but with um, some of the methods that I've been talking about. Guest M bids. There is only two. There is sorry. There is only one for guest M. Right. Just Ellie's question first, okay? There is only one bid for guest M, which is three clubs. So one spade, three clubs, would be showing clubs and hearts, the two extreme unbid suits, okay? Uh, sorry, did I say one? No, one spade, three clubs. So one heart, three clubs, would be showing spades and clubs. One diamond, three clubs, would be showing spades and clubs. And one club, three clubs, would be showing diamonds and spades. So it's always, if you're playing modified guest dem, the three club overcall is always showing a distributional two suitor with the two extreme unbid suits, the highest and lowest unbid suits. So over one club, three clubs, the highest unbid suit is spades, the lowest unbid suit is diamonds. So it's diamonds and spades. Okay, Ellie? Uh, on to Sanya's question. Uh, one club, two clubs, Michaels. Okay. You're so used to bid three clubs to show like to hearts. But if I get one club, three clubs, three hearts, will just be a sign off. Again, I wouldn't... You see, bearing in mind, if... Okay, Ellie. Right, Sanya, if you're playing one club, three clubs as guest M, modified guest M, then that's showing uh, diamonds and spades. Okay, so now three diamonds is just saying I prefer diamonds to, heart, to, to spades after one club, three clubs. Okay, uh, three hearts, which is the fourth suit, again, you decide depending on whether you're playing unassuming cubids or not, whether you want three hearts to be a sign-off or a forcing bid. Okay, if you're playing unassuming cubids, it would probably be 
uh, that you would bid four clubs over three clubs and then you would introduce hearts okay because there's an implication if it goes one club three clubs showing spades and diamonds and partner bids four clubs as an unassuming cubid that you're either going to support spades or diamonds at game level or uh, just one second or you're going to be supporting or you're going to be introducing hearts and you've got a really strong hand it's not often to be honest if partners shown a 552 suitor that you're going to start introducing the fourth suit okay if you did bid three hearts there the chances are that either you would treat it as forcing or it would be a hand with sort of seven or eight card hearts and you're just saying listen I can't I can't tolerate spades or diamonds um, how about hearts maybe you've got a couple of them um, and we can play there instead okay there's but there's not much use for three hearts as being a constructive forcing bid to be honest when partners shown 10 cards between spades and diamonds okay any other questions and can we have an east please anybody at all an east and can north south decide what system they're going to play thank you dragonfly and can you and michael decide what system you're going to play uh, we're not going to bid this particular hand i don't think um like i said it doesn't matter because hopefully uh oh okay nice one all righty if you're ready let's go so feel free to uh, intervene here Yes. Oh, come on, Naomi. Hmm? Everybody, Naomi wants a group hug. She's feeling a bit fed up and down. We got loads of hugs coming, Naomi. She certainly, she did actually try to learn to play bridge many years ago. <laughs> mm. Naomi says you lot are braver than her putting up with me okay so we're in four hearts redoubled Wow. Okay. It's okay, Susie.
certainly did. It depends what you think the double means, actually, I think, Susie. Uh, again, I mean, you're slightly thrown at the deep end here because you've probably never played with Sanya before. Um, So, I mean, here we're slightly at the mercy of your normal approach to bidding. Um, that's certainly been reflected. Yeah, well, I think you're going to be disappointed. You're definitely going to be disappointed. I think Dragonfly likes pulling the wings off flies. Yeah. As he could have claimed after trick four. I am fairly confident that that would be a top for East West. Um, not a great success. Um... Put simply, Sanya could have won trick four, I think it was, or was it trick three, with the nine of spades. Didn't need to go up with the ace of spades. That at least would have assured north-south of a plus, albeit only 200. Um, but uh, even that would not be a good score for north-south because they can make six diamonds. Um, so what went wrong here okay so the one diamond opening is fairly obvious personally I would have made a weak jump over call of two hearts with the east hand well the, the trouble is Susie don't forget that one diamond might only be a three card suit um, oh, I don't know if you've only got an 8 count most people would play um, a weak jump over call Lynn, as 5 to 9 ish or 6 to 10 um, I, I think over one diamond I think, I think a weak jump over call is, of two hearts is absolutely fine if you want to bid one heart it's also fine it's not wrong Okay, you're using a method of of assessing your hand that I certainly don't espouse and that you can't assume that partner uses. Um, I don't know how you get to 12 points necessarily in, in sort of standard ACL kind of hand assessment. Uh, you should you should uh, you could possibly get up to about a 10 count with the east hand but it's still fundamentally weak and preemptive rather than 
a hand that's worth a really constructive overcall is my personal opinion if yours differs that's absolutely fine um, so over over one heart or two hearts uh, Sanya's uh, introduced um, a bit of two clubs uh, which most people would probably treat as forcing for one round if uh, West passes. West, however, comes in quite naturally with uh, four hearts. Good bid. Put it to the ops. Um, it's preemptive, totally preemptive. Uh, they've got the support for hearts. They've got the shape. Um, now a double from North. Uh, is unequivocally for penalties and I'm not sure personally that Susie has the right hand for that you can't assume that partner's got hearts indeed the four heart bid makes it very unlikely that partner has much in the way of hearts at most a doubleton I would suggest um, given the two club bid uh, I'd be inclined to bid um, maybe something else over four hearts. You could bid four spades. Okay, just out of interest, why not, Susie? Because uh, there's nothing wrong with five clubs here. Uh, yes, they have, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean... Uh, the fact is they didn't make a, ta uh, a negative double over one heart. That's, that's the thing that definitely suggests that they don't have four spades. Because most people, if they did have four spades, would have doubled over one heart. Um, but the, the thing about, the thing about uh, four spades is that it's constructive. It's telling partner more about your hand, personally, I feel. And you want to be bidding on, because you know that even if partner... It's unlikely that you've got five spades here. Partner's going to take you for four, five, or four, six in spades and diamonds. Okay? They're unlikely to pass four spades. Um... But somehow, no, but UCBs, listen, Ellie, UCBs are when your partner has overcalled. Okay? North didn't overcall, they opened the bidding. So we're in a whole different ball game. Okay, it's not for South to make an unassuming qubit. You don't have unassuming qubits when partners open the bidding. You have other things. OK, uh, here our space is definitely constrained by the four heart bid. And preemptive bids are supposed to make life difficult and it does make life difficult. But I do feel that North South should at least be playing in five of a minor, if not six of a minor. easy to see that six diamonds is a fairly good uh, shot uh, not certain you've got to find the queen of spades yeah okay anybody else got any questions or comments about this hand because again my approach isn't necessarily I'm not guaranteeing it's the right one um, although I think it is uh, you know my approach to bidding is honed after about 50 odd years of playing this game but uh, it certainly wouldn't be the first time that somebody else has come up with an alternative method or a different approach uh, that would certainly get me thinking that maybe it's the better one okay after the redouble um, I don't think South can really bid anything Sanya I think North definitely has to bid something whether it's immediately over four hearts or over the redouble I don't think 
North can afford to let the redouble be. You see, the double is, is essentially for penalties. Okay, North could quite happily pass over four hearts. That's it. So I, I think North, it's North that has to make the, uh, the running here. Um, one diamond, two hearts, three hearts. Yes. I wouldn't disagree with that. Again, it depends on your approach. Yeah. Um, three hearts would be just a strong hand. Partners open the bidding. South's got a 13 count. They've got a singleton in op suit. I think they're worth some kind of a forcing Q bid and three hearts would be that. Or even one club, one heart, two hearts would be my preference. And now you get two spades from north. Now you bid three clubs uh, or three diamonds and you're away to the races. Okay. Uh, at some point, I do feel that south should actually show that they've got some diamond support. Um, south never showed any any support for diamonds at all in this sequence. Um, so yes, potentially over four hearts and the re the double and the redouble. South could bid five diamonds to show diamonds. Um, North hasn't shown any inclination to support clubs, so you can't. No, I'm not sleeping. I'm talking. Okay, uh, any more comments on this hand or questions? Okay, fair enough, Susie. I, I mean, um, you wouldn't necessarily want to go to five diamonds on a four four fit. Uh, but I do feel at some point, especially over the redouble, South could bid, could move. Um, but again, it's, it depends on your understanding as to what the double means. If the double of four hearts is definitely penalties, then I think it's up to North to remove it because they don't actually have a penalty double. But I think they shouldn't be doubling in the first place because I think it's confusing the matter. I think even pass over four hearts is better than double. Okay, uh, let's have a look at another one. Okay, so we have an unassuming Qubit by North. Okay, stop there, guys, if you wouldn't mind. Okay, don't stop.
Okay, so South showed a second suit and they bid again over three spaces. No, no, it's okay, Susie, it's fine. Um, so the four club bid is promising two things. Firstly, a club suit. And secondly, we know that they've got a fairly reasonable overcall in the first place. In the sense that they definitely would accept an invitation to four hearts. So four clubs is a constructive bid showing a second suit. And um, basically telling partners to take the pick. North has just contented themselves with a four heart bid. And so we can be fairly sure that North has at least a decent three level raise in hearts. But probably and might be a little bit stronger than that, but not massively stronger. Otherwise, they would be doing something other than just merely signing off in four hearts given that South now must have a decent overcall. Okay, guys, carry on. If you want to. Over to you, Lynn. I think it's your bid. Just claim, Sanya. Okay. Well done. Okay, so uh, East can tell that West, three of spades, lead is a singleton. Can't be anything else. Unless South is void in spades. So once south follows in spades, essential to get the spade draft right away. Um, and there's nothing else really to the play of the hand. Um, if north-south 
push on to a slam. Uh, it's essential to take it off by taking the first two tricks with the ace of spades and the spade rough. But probably uh, north-south correctly just subsided in game here. If uh, all north has is a decent three-level raise in uh, hearts, south has a, a fairly average 13 count, 14 count. Um, and although the king of spades is well-placed, they haven't got that much to spare that they can really expect to look for a slam opposite a three-level raise in their suit. Um, so probably wise to uh, just subside in game. So again there, you've got a few inferences. Um... Well, you could do, but again, only, you've only got a 10 count. You've got length in their suit, Sanya. If you had a singleton spade, you might do that. But with four card spades, um, you must be wary that West is sitting over South. So the, the possibility of Roughs and over roughs is there. Um, on the other hand, Susie, if Barton's got length in clubs, it means they're probably shortish in diamonds. Haha, <laughs> okay. And you know that you're going to be able to rough losing clubs in your hand, Susie. So from that point of view, the hands are fitting quite well. No, it's not. I mean, it's just it's not that. Just just one second, guys. No, and, and that's a good reason for just signing off quietly in four hearts. That's a more telling point than the club issue, because if partner's got four or five clubs, you know you can rough clubs and help to establish his clubs by roughing them in your hand. And if they've got, say, five clubs, it's likely they've got a spade shortage. And you've got the top two diamonds, so that's potentially getting rid of at least one loser. Or covering diamond, uh, partners, diamond losers. So, I mean, actually, the hands are fitting quite well. It's just the critical thing is that ops can, in fact, take the first two tricks in spades. If they don't take the first two tricks in spades, um, you're potentially making six hearts here. Okay. Uh, any other issues for anybody? Um, East thought for a, a minute or two about whether to insert the ten of spades. No, no, just stay unless somebody desperately wants to sit or somebody desperately wants to stand. Um, if anybody wants to sit and play a few hands, then just shout up, okay? But we haven't got that much longer to go. Um... But normally it's a struggle to get people to sit, Susie. So I would stay where you are for now. It's refreshing. Um, I don't see anybody uh, with their hand up. Sort of me, 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 me. Um,
<laughs> oh, your choices are limited here, Michael. Yes, that's better. Ho ho. Well, I think we'll play this one out. <laughs> it is ugly. I think uh, Susie definitely gets the Wilmington ugly dummy. Um, Michael. The Wilmington Ugly Dummy Award, by the way, it's a fictitious award, but it's in honour of uh, uh, NFM FL, who is an OCP bidder who isn't around these much these days, but he was a notorious aggressive bidder. Um, he would have come up with five hearts without a shadow of a doubt. Oh, I bet you will. Oh, and a Trump promotion as well. Oops. Ouch.
<laughs> oh well. Yes, and these high level decisions aren't always easy, Susie. Um I think Sanya could have got out with less than eleven hundred, but uh um It is just practice, absolutely. <laughs> I, I think she was expecting a little bit more than your um, flat one count, I must admit. Okay. Uh, anyway, so... I mean, actually, of course... It is possible for um, I think six diamonds can potentially make on this hand, but it needs a lot of right decisions. Um, no, actually, I think it doesn't. I think five diamonds is the limit. Uh, I think you can make five clubs or five diamonds. So on that basis, the five, uh, the bidding up to five clubs was fine. Um, I think if North passes over five clubs, East has an easy bid of five diamonds. And the bidding probably stops there. I think North South can get out for 800 in five parts doubled. Maybe even 500, but certainly 800. Um, but not much less than that. They've got too much work to do, given that South can't reach dummy except with a spade rough. And West is going to be roughing spades before dummy. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay. Um, I know it's 12 o'clock, but we'll try one more. No, then you stay where you are because said so we're going to be stopping shortly. I, I normally stop at about 12 o'clock. I'm not sure. Is John Loot here? No, he's not. Does anybody know if John's around? I haven't seen John for a couple of weeks, so unless anybody's had word of him, I think I would assume that the practice tomorrow probably isn't on. Unless somebody wants to step into the hot seat, prepare some hands and conduct it. So whichever version of Michaels you're playing, between what, uh, Sanya? You're not strong enough for three diamonds, I don't feel. Um, 
like I said, you're entitled to assume that partner's got uh, both majors and a weak hand. But I would, with your hand, I would, and definitely with your majors, I wouldn't be, I certainly wouldn't be uh, um, mucking about with three hearts. I would either be bidding three diamonds, as you say, which is a non-assuming cubit, or I would be bidding four hearts with the south hand. Um, three diamonds, to some extent, does uh, potentially mean what uh, Susie was saying, which is that you're relatively even suited in the majors and asking partner to choose, whereas South actually has a definite preference here. Um, if North is five to nine, which is likely, then realistically, uh, South has a decent expectation of making game, but probably not much past that. If North turns out to be 16 plus, Sanya, if North has got both majors, which is what they're promising, okay, almost all of your points are in the majors. Feel free to claim seven, Sanya. But you can play it out if you like. But you're only making 11 tricks if they lead diamonds, so don't feel bad. Definitely is. Yeah, it's at least 5-5, five five, Charlene. Um, you know, you could argue that the north hand is strong enough to be counted as intermediate and just bid one spade. Um, in which case, you're going to get an unassuming Q bid from south over one spade, and you probably still end up in four hearts. Okay, any other uh, questions or comments on this one? Um, let me just check with her indoors. Are you ready for bed soon or are you... Right guys, just... Uh, I shall set the next hand going and I shall go and get my better half and refill of coke. And we're talking... Dark liquid, not white powder. <laughs> okay, next one coming up. Back in a minute.
Right, how are we getting on? Oh, now, are East West playing uh, Guestem or modified Guestem or just straight Michaels? Well, no, um, Lynn, if you're going to play modified guest M, which is what I would su suggest, you actually should be bidding three clubs, which shows the extreme unbid suits, i.e. highest and lowest. And you might want to alert it as that. That's okay. Yes. Ho ho. No, I was thinking of the six club bid actually. East West certainly got their teeth into this one. Wow. Go for it, Susie. Now.
Well done, Susie. Uh, you were lucky enough to get the only lead that allows six spades to make. Um, she was lucky. She was scared. <laughs> you, no, she, she says she was lucky. Um, without a heart lead, you're doomed. Six spades is doomed. Um, in practice, even... Uh, if you if you don't get a club lead, even six diamonds is doomed. Um, I think you can probably end play if you're in six diamonds. I think you can end play east if you don't get a club lead. I think you can. Um, Throw two hearts on the long spades. Um, in fact, you don't even need that. Throw a club and a heart on the... Yes, you do. Throw a club and a heart on the long spades. And then end play, having eliminated all the other suits, just end play east in hearts by ducking... Um, anything but hearts, actually, Sanya. Um, yeah, you just tuck a heart into the east hand, having eliminated everything else. As long as you've kept a diamond in each hand, um, east is then played. If you just play a heart to the eight, they have to win with the nine and then lead a heart back or give you a rough and slough. But uh, a heart lead, unfortunately, uh, even allows six spades to make. So well done. Um, difficult bids. Again, high level interference does make it awkward. Uh, you guys might want to come back for when we cover non-penalty slam doubles. Um, and uh, control denying and control control denying doubles because they would definitely help you in this sequence it would help north south to make the right decision um, anyway well done one more hand and then I'm definitely going to call it bedtime so I'll just bear with me a minute That's okay. One more hand coming up. I think we'll try that one. You are welcome, guys, as always. Like I said uh, at the start, I'm sorry about last week. Um, this should have been last week, but uh, I was suddenly changed to a 9 o'clock finish, and there was no way that I can get home from work, get something to eat, walk the dogs, feed the neighbours pigeons, and get set up in time for 10 o'clock. This is last week, maybe. It's just unfortunate, Sonia, that when I'm when I'm on afternoons and starting at eight o'clock and nine o'clock the following morning, it really is tough uh, to do a ten till twelve session.
Really? Okay, so three clubs is a sort of a sort of reverse Bergen, yeah. No, nor have I, but clearly some people do. Somebody mentioned it earlier on, actually, Sonia. Yeah, Len, I think the issue is um, whether you play Bergen when partners overcalled rather than opening the bidding. But yeah, I mean, if that's what you play, then, then that's fine. Um, very well done, Michael. Um, I must admit, I would have laid good money against South having the King of Hearts. Um, but there you go. Um, not much really to say here. I, I mean, the methods that Lynn's used in terms of Bergen... Uh, clearly can potentially work in this situation. Um, I think I might have bid four hearts over three clubs rather than four spades and just give partner a choice. Um, it's a more constructive bid. Okay. I think um, okay uh, please do come next week uh, whether you've ever seen competitive Levin Sol or not okay uh, please do come along next week and please uh, try and persuade some of your friends and partners to come along next week 
uh, it's one of the single most important sessions in the whole of my uh, sort of year-long course of lessons um, that will potentially benefit you more than anything else, especially if you don't play OCP. Um, those who, who learn OCP with me um, get lots of bites at Levensol, and they'll see Levensol in competition in action in plenty of the hands and plenty of the practices because most of the people who play OCP regularly have learnt it and use it. Uh, 